So today we're just gonna talk about um, the collective, right? Yeah. The gathering of all the artists, yeah. filmmakers. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, um, I do understand. You know, I was listening to you mm -hmm. um, in there doing your master class, mm -hmm. and you were talking about. Do you have anything on my teeth? No, you don't have, on no. <laughs> red lipstick is horrible. You know, it is. As far as on your teeth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we being girls. Right it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> and um, you were talking about pretty much image and how image is important mm -hmm. and is very important. Sometimes you know, um, you know, people don't think about what they say or or should they respond. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So as as my dad would say, you know, everything doesn't deserve doesn't a deserve. response. Right. You You're know, right. but it's hard sometimes. It is hard because you do want to defend yourself. You know, I come from a place where I'm in a... Well, I do want people to know me for me. And when I was in Destiny's Child, a lot of people said, well, we didn't get to really know who you are. Yeah. So when I see things about me online where people pass a judgment or something, I'm like, but that's not who I am. But yeah. then I'll, I'll show something contrary if I respond. So it's, it's there is a balance. But like someone said, your clapbacks are always graceful. So, you know... I do not want people to also be ignorant. Yeah. So if we're if there's going to be social media, I don't mind engaging with someone, but let's keep it respectful. We don't have we will never agree on everything, but I don't like seeing people um just really drag people for their opinion on yeah. something, you know. So it it really it really depends on what is said, but your dad is right. Everything does not need to respond. But what I do love responding to is someone who's like um I've had people especially when it's college season, you know, they're like, Michelle, please pray for me. You know, I'm like, I'm gonna pray, but you got to study. But and yeah. then I'll say, then I'll say something like, keep me posted. And they'll respond back to me a few weeks later, said I passed, I made it to the next grade, or I got a 4.0 for my GPA. So I love keeping in touch with people because they, I never want them to feel like they're, a, they're, I'm not reachable and that they're, they're not alone. Gone are the days when artists could just be invincible or invisible now you have to really touch the people I do come from that era where you had a strategy team you had PR you just show up to the meet and greets and your concerts whatever you do your get on stage and do your thing but now some of the people that you thought wouldn't be on social media have one Halle Berry just joined Instagram mm -hmm. remember Prince yeah. and Prince was doing a lot of his own yes. tweeting you're like yeah. Prince the most mysterious man <laughs> Yeah. You know, so um, who I wanted to get so I'm like, like Prince Harry and Prince William and, you know, his wife and everything. I'm like, y'all don't ever tweet, you know, yeah. Queen Elizabeth. And then when o Oprah be tweeting. Oh, yeah, Oprah, Instagram. So then, post. yeah, so we have no reason not yeah. to, you know, engage with people because consumers are smarter now. Uh, you cannot do publicity stunts no more. They can smell it a mile away. So just be authentic, and if they want to buy into you, they will. That's good. Yeah. Also, when it comes down to rejection, of course, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know, people take rejection very personal. Yeah. yeah, and I've got to speak on that in the next class. This is my first master class, so I'm really learning things. And next time, I'm gonna pass out papers and have y'all do homework and take oh. notes. No, for real. If I'm gonna do this thing, we are gonna do it. So, rejection, because you want people to like you. Yeah. It's that little girl or that little boy where when you were in school and they were playing kickball, but you had to pick teams before you got out on yeah. the field and play. And you're like, man, I hope they pick me, I pick you. And then when you're the last to be picked, you're like, yeah. was it something about me? And that can translate into an artist. Yeah. Whether you're painting, yeah. that painting, or whether you're a singer mm -hmm. or journalism and broadcasting, you want people to to like you, but it should not affect you if they don't. Just know that if you don't like me, there are probably 10 others that do. Yeah. So you should always kind of really try to keep that perspective. You're not gonna be for everybody, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah, because I know a lot of people do deal with rejection because, mm -hmm. but, you know, when I was younger, my mom made me do everything, like modeling and pageants. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> and and in that in in modeling especially print work because i'm short you guys um you know you may not be that height or the skin tone or different things and you know when you're rejected but they called you for the interview or the audition yeah. it's like a slap in the face yeah. you know yeah. and, and i know with artists especially gospel artists it's, you know it's a little tougher because everybody's doing a worship song you yeah. know everybody has the same person almost featured or using the same yeah. producers yeah. so those producers are giving the same sounds mm -hmm. to various artists you know and rejection can just be uh you know a, a bit challenging you know it's in every industry whether you're a nurse a teacher or an artist there is some form of Rejection. There is some sort of hierarchy in who people assume is better than, and they'll treat that person. But my thing, when I have felt rejected, I'll use a different term, preserved. Okay. Okay. I feel like if a lot of people don't see me out, or if I'm not selected for a lot of things, I'm preserved. And while you feel rejected, and while you to me are being preserved, stay in preparation so that when you are called on, it's like you've been doing it all along. So when I feel rejected, I'm like, God, it's because you're preserving me for something better. Not only preserving, he, it is protection. He could be protecting you from a bad deal. Yeah. You know, I feel like I want to be on a talk show one day or a panel, but if I feel like I get turned down from all the auditions, Either I'm supposed to do my own. Yeah. Most people that are rejected are to be trailblazers anyway. Yeah. Do it yourself. And then once you do it yourself, people will follow. Yeah. Once you're consistent, people will follow. And before you know it, you're not the rejected one anymore. You're the respected one. Because yeah. you will do it yourself. So just know that when if you are feeling rejected, man, trailblazers yeah. most of your trailblazers have been the rejected ones whether it's from elementary school being picked on or you've been seen as different yeah. i say it all the time embrace being different yeah. i've been olive oil they call okay. me olive oil all my life oh wow <laughs> it is what it is you know my mother says it'll change once i have children i'm like mama you just hating <laughs> you know but you know you've been called skinny or you've been called or you don't People won't hang out with you because you might be dark skinned or you're too yellow or it's always something. Yeah. But God is so good that He has a place for all of us. That's and I thank Him for it. I noticed that as your career has evolved, because that's what's what it's continued to do, yeah. it continues to progress. Mm -hmm. Um, just being one of your followers, mm -hmm. as usual. Um, <laughs> um, I see that you're going more into like the mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, wait, mentorship. Um, I saw that, I want to say maybe last week I was on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I seen that you were at, I want to say, Dr. Hayes, The Merge? The Merge Summit, yeah. Dr. Holly Carter. Okay. Um, she does a lot of my branding and television and theatrical work for me, management. And she and Robbie Reed, who's a brilliant casting director for BET, they found a way to have people that are of faith but that are in the industry to encourage other people that – I can be a faith, but still be a movie producer. Mm -hmm. The guy, um, a guy who's producing a huge film that's coming out of Disney with Lupita Youngo. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a person of faith, but he's a senior exec at Disney. Yeah. Or you have an artist like myself or people like Denzel who have come throughout the years, Lisa Ray, so many people that you're like, man, they're people of faith yeah. that you it can coexist in the entertainment industry, whether it's from artists or behind the scenes, writers, you know, you just never know. And I did a panel on mental health and wellness. Mm -hmm. That's something that we don't talk about in a lot of conferences, um, which is your mental health. How are you? Can you deal with rejection? Yeah. You know, the, or are you gonna have a temper tantrum the first time? This like, you have anger problems. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you have to find out, okay, well, where do those anger problems come from? Yeah. Did it come from reject rejection as a child? Did it come from be from abuse of some sort? So I think for us to be as healthy and whole as we can be to enjoy everything that God has for us, I want us to be whole in every way. All right, awesome. And also, you're talking about tours. I know that you have Leading Ladies Tour. Yeah, the Leading Ladies Tour, and that is by the Boss Network. Okay. Um, Kamika Smith out of um, Chicago, Illinois. She has one of the leading women's websites. It's been recognized as Forbes in Forbes magazine as one of the top networking websites for women. 
Um, and I think it's absolutely amazing. Our last stop is in Charlotte, September, I want to say 20th. Um, between the 20th and 23rd. See, I don't look that far on my schedule. It can be quite overwhelming. Yeah. Let me be in the moment. <laughs> but we, our last stop will be in Charlotte. We did t Dallas um, like about a week or two ago. We honored Cora Jakes Coleman. It's sponsored by Prudential. So it's women who are entrepreneurs okay. or women who are in the corporate world that are just women that lead. Okay. And I think it was an absolutely brilliant concept. All right, awesome. You said Prudential. So, I want to say her name was Budgetista. Yeah, she was at the New Jersey one. She okay. got honored as well. Yeah. And she really has some really, really good tips. Like I said, it's founded, it's sponsored by Prudential, who's one of the top leading financial institutions. Yeah. So, they're also teaching women, you know, how to save your money, how to budget, or if you have a small business, what to do, and they will help you financially plan. Absolutely. Yeah, we got to, you know, we can be fly at everything, but have we planned things financially at that's, the same time? That's true. So we thank you, Michelle. We thank you for coming in Thank y'all for having me. Thank y'all. Y'all got to come to next year's collective. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Congratulations to my cousin Trent. And thank y'all so much for covering oh, it. I oh, think we really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. No, we thank him for the opportunity. Like yeah. he was stating earlier, you said that sometimes you just have to go out and do it. And I can honestly say that uh, I'm not going to cry, though. Yeah. <laughs> Me and uh, Stefan here, my yeah. business partner, I told him what I wanted to do. And three years ago, we started this. And awesome. then we got back, started it maybe about three weeks ago again maybe about a month ago mm. and he actually believed in me See? and said let's do it and, and we've been doing it and when you said that I was like I am not gonna cry <laughs> you know what it takes sometimes it takes one person to believe in you it took one person to believe in me I actually have my betting line is called believe yeah. because when I had the idea to do it in 2005 and when I had the idea my manager laughed at me but some years later, my next manager said, what do you want to do? Yeah. Told her what I wanted to do. Before you know it, in May of 2015, we had a meeting. In September of 2015, we launched my betting line oh, wow. on Evine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. So just, but it took just one person. Yeah. You might have told the wrong people. Yeah. But God is amazing how he'll place that one right person in your life. To, so that you don't get discouraged and not do what you're supposed to do. Imagine if you got discouraged. Imagine if he had not come into your life, yeah. what you would, what would have happened. So take that and learn from it. Don't get discouraged. You know, build on it. Go to as many events as you can. It, when you get on the red carpet, especially when you're starting out, you might not get Denzel at first. <laughs> you know, you'll get the co-star or yeah. something. But when you keep going before you know it, you'll get the people that you have ever dreamed of sitting down talking to. That's true. All right, so stay with it. Stay encouraged, everybody. Yeah. All right? Thank you. All right. Aww. Thank you. Aww. <laughs> it's all Thank good. You. We all been there. All right. And we just need that, that yeah. person that God sends. Yeah, but you talked about the team earlier in there, yeah. and, and that really connected with me when you were saying having the right people on your team and them understanding yeah. where yeah. you're going, Partly your purpose. Partnering with your purpose. And I think that out of everything that you said, that really stuck wow. to me. I'm glad I said something. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you did. That, that wrenched your heart. Yeah, because pretty much when we partnered together, yeah. we were able to make it happen. And we've been friends for years, he'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> but but he believed in me, and uh, we're, we're going with what God yeah. told us to do. Right. And it's been successful. I mean, this is the beginning of my career, and I'm talking to Michelle Williams. Yay, honey. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you, God will do it. He'll, you know, be, heck, you might get Denzel and Angela Bassett and all of them. You might not. Sometimes favor is to the place where, you know, you have to wait in line. God will get you right there, and you will be interviewing the A-list um, actors and people in corporate America one day. So I'm encouraging you all to keep doing this, keep it inspiring. You know, and you can get two people to a place like me where we just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> if you are mean and intrusive, yeah. people will shut down yeah. and won't talk to you. That's but keep being sweet. Yeah. Keep being nice. Know what they're doing. Like, be aware of the projects and stuff that they're doing because it makes them feel like, 
wow, you're interested in talking to me for real and not just, you know, you got to get a rating, which th that is important too. You yeah. want good ratings. Yeah. But when people feel like, you know, because I'm going to sit down and take the time to talk to you, I also want to make sure that you respect my work and craft. Mm -hmm. And so I just thank you for being a jewel. Aww. And I thank y'all for being so nice. So we can go because I'll talk forever. <laughs> See, people like that will make you talk. Yeah. We could talk for an hour about life. Yeah, you know sure. what I mean? <laughs> we got to go. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye, you guys. It's Camilla Lee. And thank you so much, Miss Michelle, for coming right. to um, just hang with us today. And we thank you guys for tuning in. And hopefully next year we'll see you at the Collective.